What's up guys, today I want to start off with showing you how to print out a uh, basically the text on a file of some sort. So the first thing is uh, I'm just going to open up a text editor right now I'm in Visual Studio Code but you can open up Sublime or Atom and we're just going to create a little readme file to, to uh, test out and play with. So uh, I've just created with some simple text in it and I'm just going to save it in my downloads folder. And I'm just going to call this readme.md. Okay. And I saved it in my downloads. Now I'm going to come over to terminal and I'm currently just in my home directory or home folder and I want to move to my downloads so I can go look at that file. So I'm going to do cd downloads um, if we do an ls, we'll notice we see the readme. Um, and I want to see what's inside of it. I want to see these words right there. So to do that, if you do cat, and the name of the file, so readme, um, it'll actually, notice it'll print out hashtag hello world and then what's up. Notice because we didn't put a new line at the end, um, it's kind of messed up with our prompt right there. If we go back real quick, and add a new line, save, and then cat the readme again shows up. Now, did you notice how fast I was able to type cat readme right there? Like, look how fast I typed that. I typed it again. Just kidding, I'm not actually typing. Um, what's happening is, you notice the last command we typed was cat readme. If you hit up arrow, it'll actually show you the last command you just typed, and you can do it again. So all I was doing is saying up arrow, and typing again. So that's really handy. Um, if, for example, now I want to cat maybe readme.txt, I can just do hit up arrow, modify the command a little bit, and then run it again. So that was just clear. Um, so that's super duper handy. Um, the next thing I want to show you is copying. Um, so let's say I want to copy readme. I would do the CP, the name of the file that I want to copy, and then the new name. We can call it Bob if we want to. Um, now if we cat Bob, we should see hello world. And we do. Awesome. Um, let's say I want to rename Bob. Um, so maybe I want to get call him Don. Or Don's a bad name. No offense, Don's. Let's call it, um, uh, let's call it Sebastian. That's a good name. Um, so if I just do MV and then Bob, the name of the file, and then its new name, that will change it for us. So if we do an ls, we'll see we have readme and we have Sebastian, and Bob is gone. Bob is no longer there. And if I cat Sebastian, it has all the stuff in it, awesome, that we would expect Bob to have in. So this is Bob. Um, notice the move command, uh, Sebastian, and then something else, ABC. Um, notice how this actually renames it. You can also use it to move something. So if the second command is not a folder, uh, or second parameter is not a folder, it actually renames it. But if it is folder, it moves it in there. So for example, if I made a directory called f1, and I tried moving Sebastian, and then f1 as my second parameter, it would not rename Sebastian as f1, it would move Sebastian into f1. Like that. If we do an ls, we just see f1 and then Sebastian. Also, good to note, you cannot just copy directories like this. You have to do the dash r flag because you have to recursively copy all the files inside of a directory. So for example, I can copy f1 into f2. You're not into, make a copy of. So if I do an ls, now we have uh, f2. So if I do an ls of f1, we had Sebastian in there. If we do ls of f2, we have Sebastian in there too. And we can even cat Sebastian in f2. And we notice it says, hello world, what's up? Okay, very cool. Um, we're able to copy, move things. Um, notice I can move, I can also rename uh, folders the same thing, so F3, F2 to F3. We don't have a folder called F3, so it renames F2 to F3. Now we have a folder named F1, so if I did move F3 to F1, it would now move F3 inside of F1. So if I did ls, we now just have f1 in readme here. And if I did ls of f1, we notice we have f1 and Sebastian in there. And if I did an ls of f1, and then I did f3, 
So this is an LSN F3. Uh, we see Sebastian in there as well. Cool, and do you guys remember how to delete those? So I want to remove F1. So I do remove RF and F1 is gone. Bye. Um, so those are really helpful commands right there that I just showed you. Most important one I want you to remember is up arrow. That guy you'll use a ton. I want to rerun the last command. I just hit the up arrow. And you can keep going. So notice how the last command I did was ls. Hit the up arrow once. It's ls. Hit up arrow again. Still ls because I did ls here. Up arrow. ls here again. If I hit the up arrow again, we're now on remove rf. And you can just keep hitting the up arrow and getting earlier commands that you have already typed. Super helpful. Um, to rename files, you do move and then the name of the first file and then the name of the second file. So move readme to uh, maybe A, that renames it. Um, to copy a file, you put the name of the first one and the second one, now it creates two. To do uh, copies of folders, you have to do the dash R flag. Um, and then cat was the uh, last thing that we taught you. And cat was, if we do cat A, that prints the contents of A. That was a lot of material right there. I'll put in the description all the commands that we just did. Um, watch this video again. This is a very important one. Knowing all these commands is super helpful. Um, if you have any questions on how any of these work, leave a comment below and I'd be happy to help you out.